Freaking at the Freakers Ball right here live on RealLibertyMedia.com on this Friday, June 22nd, 2018. Uh huh, the first Freakers Ball of the summer for this year. So, uh, welcome everybody to the Freakers Ball. If you're not here on RealLibertyMedia.com on channel one, <laughs> where the Freakers Ball is. <laughs> yeah, I almost know the website. Um, come on over. Yeah, we got the chat there. We got the video there. We got we got everything there. Uh, but you can find us other ways. You can go to vonlive.tv slash Real Liberty Media, and, and you'll find a video there. And you got a chat room uh, there on irc.freenode.net where you can jump on in and chat with the folks and uh, make song requests and Oh, all kinds of fun stuff, you know, um, <laughs> all of that wonderful stuff. Uh, and we're also on rlmradio.xyz, hooray for the XYZ, and then we're on the various other places the RLM radio stream goes out. We are also live on the freedomsnetwork.com, which, by the way, Freedoms Network has been extended for an additional month through July 23rd now. I, I guess that's the deal now. We're going month to month on that. I hate doing it that way, but if that's how the donation is going to roll in, it costs a bit more. But, you know, um, since they're donating, what am I? Who am I to say? Anyway, welcome to all the, all the free Freedoms Network people that may be tuned in over there. I, I don't know who all may be there. It's always kind of a little bit hard to tell. But uh, welcome to you, and welcome to those on InternetRadio.com and on TuneIn.com. And if you're on your Roku Welcome to you as well, and wherever else you may be, good to have you here with us tonight on the Freakers Ball. And I think I think I think Moose Girl's on her way. I saw her, I saw that I saw that she logged into the communication device, <laughs> so I imagine she'll be here soon enough. Oh man, it's been hot, hot, hot. Whoa, hang on, hang on. Here she is. Hello. Hello. Hey, it's the Mighty Moose. It is. I'm here. The triumphant return of the Mighty Moose. Yes. It's been two weeks. It has been. Two two fun filled weeks of balls to the freaker's wall. Yeah, Freak awesome. Freaker's balls to the wall. <laughs> Hope it went well. I went fine. Good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Good, good, good. But, uh, yeah, no, we missed you. That's that's all, you know. Uh, anytime you're not here with us, and we know you're out having a good time doing something oh, fun. Oh, yeah. And, and, well, I don't know how fun the boys thing was, but I'm sure the festival was fun. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I went, well, the boys' party went good. It was only a four-hour thing. And then I um, went to a different party with some friends, and that was fun. So Cool. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I mean... You're up there in the cities with all your old, you know, high school buds. Uh, yeah. They aren't really old high school buds. Well, some of them are. But... All right. Well, whatever they are. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> and I was able to uh, uh, go to Blue Ox last weekend, so that was awesome. Yep, yep. Blue Ox. Mighty Blue Ox. It was, yep. It was amazing, as usual. Yeah. Four years. It's been going on, and this the last this this year was the biggest year as far as people oh, attending. How, how, yes. many, how many did he get out there? Oh, uh, I would say uh, ten thousand, maybe right. less, probably less than ten thousand. That's still that's a good crowd. That's still, a good crowd. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's a, that's like a you know a sports arena style size concert, but outside. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's cool. And who was your favorite of all the bands that played? Well, who who performed the best? I can't pick just one, but <laughs> I gotta say Charlie Parr. Charlie, yeah. Year, just because I I actually teared up and started crying a little bit when he was playing one song. Oh. Well. So I really. Yes, I, uh, I really, um, 
love Tommy, or Charlie Park. <laughs> yeah, he's a good old guy, boy. You, yeah, you and I guess you watched it, right? Yeah, I watched the Charlie Park show here on on the on the stream. You know, the live stream. Yep. Yep, so sweet. That was cool. Yeah. And then I saw some of the, uh, um, that other band. <laughs> Infamous String Dusters or Pertnier? No, Pertnier. Pertnier's Headstone, yeah. Yep. No, I didn't okay. see Infamous String Dusters or Horseshoes and Hand. They were there? Were Horseshoes and Hand Grenades there? Uh, yes, they were. Okay, no, I didn't see them either. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, they were there. I saw um, those two. Uh, so, and that was good, though, you know. I, I saw. They, they they did a shot of of some girls down in front. I thought one of them might be you. Um, I it probably was me. <laughs> yeah, you're just kind of you know with their tie dyes and their and their hats and their sunglasses and hopping around and. Right. <laughs> that surprised me though when I actually started, or I actually. It's it it surprised me. A little bit. What, 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 I'm like, what? I've heard this song a million times. What the hell? <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. It yeah. was just weird. Still, it was still just choked like, you up. Well, it's one of my favorite songs. It's called Cheap Wine. And I don't Imagine just that. about that song. I just love it. And it's just awesome. <laughs> so. It's, and then Pertnier on Friday night, I request, or I was yelling out Appalachian Girl. I knew they were going to play it like Friday night. Yeah. But then, then after they were done, I was standing right there, and Jay was right there. I'm like, Jay, can you guys play Appalachian Girl tomorrow? He's like, sure, but no one else will listen to it. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I'll, that's just, not true. Just all these other ten thousand um, people, well, they won't listen. <laughs> right. They played. They played it. So that was yeah. really cool. And they they that, play that, three nights. They play three nights, right? Two nights. They play Friday night and Saturday night. Oh, okay. I thought I saw them on the schedule for three, but whatever. Uh, maybe. Maybe. I don't think they were on Thursday, but, um, yeah, they're pretty uh, amazing. And so the best, you know, and then the other best part was getting my picture taken with Chris Pandolfini from Infamous String Dusters, who's the, the banjo player. Right. I'm just standing there, and all of a sudden I looked over, and there he is. I'm like, What? <laughs> I'm like, to my friends over there, I didn't have my phone with me. I'm like, Sam, did you take a picture of me with Chris from Infamous Street? <laughs> She's like, sure. So I'm yeah, like, sweet. Well, yeah, if if you uh, if you happen to be uh, watching the uh, stream there while we're talking. Um, <laughs> yeah? You may see that picture. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Yes, there it is. That's me <laughs> with Chris from Infamous String Dusters. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so they were my third favorite. I mean, they really bring it. Every time they perform, they just, they knock it out of the freaking park, dude. They really do. Cool. So, yeah, they're awesome. So it was it was a really good, good uh, festival. Right. But I do say, I must say, and I know this is part of the white, the world right now, but undercover cops are bullshit, okay? I don't think, I think that's a terrible tactic. I think it's coercion, and it's, it, uh, okay, so let's say this is Colorado, right? Okay. Undercover cops should not be busting people with weed inside the music part. Well, it's apparently, just apparently because apparently. it's legal, so you don't need to bust people because it's legal. Well, well there, was, there was a video uh, today that somebody shared here on Real Liberty Media mm -hmm. uh, of cops busting some guy sitting at a bus stop, rolling a joint. In Colorado? In Colorado. What the hell? Exactly. What the hell is up with that? I have no idea what's up with that, but there it was. For, but did they arrest him for weed? Are we sure that it was for weed or not? Maybe he had a warrant or something. No, no he was just some guy sitting at a bus stop. They wouldn't have known he had a warrant. <laughs> but wrong. they could call shit in right on their fucking little thing. Yeah, they don't know who they he is. He's just some guy oh, sitting there. Any paper. How, how would they know who he was? Well, yeah, if they had his ID, they would know. But... Well, yeah, but they didn't have his ID until they came and busted for rolling a joint. That's bullshit. Yep. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be recreational is legal there, right? Well, that's 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 the rumor. 
What the hell? Yeah. See, this is what I can't stand. They fucking do this crap. They say, oh, it's legal. But then they're busting you for weed. Exactly. So, come on. This is bullshit. Absolutely. Ugh. Ugh. It's just, I don't, this is why I don't trust these fuckers. I do not trust these these people, these, this government as a whole. I don't trust I don't the trust any government. government. Why, why, why would anybody trust any government? They're all thieves and liars and murderers. Right. <laughs> and I don't understand, you know, there's people that, okay, for me, it comes down to you're either with them or you're not. You're either for them or you're against them. This gray area that people think exists, it's it's a bad place to be in this gray area. Because you don't know what the fuck you believe in Yeah, well, when you you're know. in a gray area. You, you, you believe this, you believe that, and you're like, well, I don't know. You know, well, it's, you, you, people need to make a decision. Well, well, you, well you, you see those people out there, and, they, and they've got, like, uh, the, the Molon lobby thing, right? Which is right. which is come and take Molon it. Molon lobby, yep. Yeah, come and take it, talking about their guns. And then right, right next to that, they have a big one of those Blue Lives Matter flags. And it's like, who do you think's coming to take it? Right. It's a, it's a fucking oxymoron. <laughs> they're, those guys it's that like, you're supporting you there, they're, 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 sovereign citizen. they're the you ones that are going to come and take it. <laughs> you can't be a sovereign citizen. It's right. an oxymoron to, to say those words together. Yeah. Well, we had a, uh, a conversation about that here in the chat today. Of course, you know, right. the, the only person that was thinking it was anything to it was Hans, but... <laughs> I mean, okay, they do lie about spaceships because the U.S. government owns motherfucking spaceships. All right? So, it's omission of facts is also lying. Okay? And just for context, she's reading a, a comment in the chat here about spaceships. Yeah. It, someone says at least they don't lie about spaceships. Bullshit! They lie about everything. Yes, they do. Okay, Grandma agrees with me. So, awesome! <laughs> of course I agree with you. Uh, it's pretty rare that I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no gray area, people. Pick a side and go with it. Don't be shooting the grays. Oh, I'm not talking about that. No, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm responding to Goober there. <laughs> Which, of course, that's not what he's talking about either. But <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> you can't half ass this shit. You can't be, well, I like the government for this reason and that reason. And I don't like them for this reason and that reason. It's like, okay, you're wishy washy then. You're, right. in the, you're in this gray area that you, you, you don't know where you really stand. You're confused. If you're in that gray area, yeah. yeah. I mean. I still play the game, just like every motherfucker out there. Everybody got sure, to. There's some people out there that don't have to work or don't work or whatever, right? Right. But I was raising kids by myself for 18 years, and I had to fucking work. I had to play the game to a certain point. You know, what? I could have, if I really wanted to be hardcore, anarchist, I could have moved to fucking Canada, lived in a van in the middle of the fucking woods or something. Down by the river. You know, or whatever, yeah. but... You know, I, I chose to be free in my mind and play the game as much as I have to, just like everyone else has to. I mean, exactly. the only way to not play the game is to go off grid or whatever, And but good luck with that, because they don't like people going off grid. They don't want that. No, they certainly do not. They don't want you to be self-sufficient. And any, they don't want you to be self-sufficient at all. No, no, no. If you're if you're off grid, they're going to consider you a terrorist. Right. So you got that to, to, to deal with, contend with. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Canada, supposedly the whole country, as of October seventeenth, coming up October seventeenth, recreational weed will be non legalized, non illegalized. For the whole country. Yeah, it's, it's a really crappy way they've done it up there. And I mean, I, I, it's, it's better than 
having it not all illegal, but <laughs> it's not good. It's not good what they've done. Um, but uh, that's a whole other story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know what the T-Rex reference means, but um, I do know that they had short fucking arms. What? Go ahead. Who's a T -Rex. takes on a T-Rex? Little short arms. I, I don't know either. I, I they might couldn't, like, do anything. Take on arms. a T-Rex because they, they got, they got uh, uh, big mouths uh, and a lot of teeth. <laughs> they can just pick you up, you know. Uh, I mean, they could... Their heads were huge, and their yeah. jaws were, like, huge, and their teeth were huge. So they could just bite your head right yeah, off. Yeah, they just just bite you, just pick you right, up in your mouth. Right, they just bite your head right off. Two and a half, yeah. Right. <laughs> but other than that, I, uh, I don't know. I'm sure that there's a way to take them down by yourself if you if you were determined. <laughs> if there were any right. just, if there were any left in existence. But <laughs> <laughs> being as there haven't been for a couple of days now. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yesterday was the summer solstice. Yeah. And so, happy summertime to everybody that yeah. enjoys summertime. I'm personally not a fan, but I like. <laughs> but I, I like when the solstice gets here because the days quit getting longer, and they'll start getting shorter from now, uh, from yesterday. Right. Yeah. So uh, that's a bonus. I'll take that for sure. It's, it's been it's been a very hot June here in central New Mexico where I am, and um, we've had several days that are at or slightly over a hundred degrees. Ouch! Yeah, it's, it's like I don't I don't I think this is since I've moved up here, which has been um, fifteen what thirteen? When did I move here? Uh, 2005, so uh, 13 years. 13 years. Uh, oh, yeah, that, I guess that was yesterday. It was 13 years. So. All right. Nice. <laughs> I forget about it. Yeah, that, that's my anniversary date. The, the, 20, the 21st of June is my anniversary date. So 13 years of being a New Mexican, and uh, this is the hottest it's been for for this particular month which is the hottest month of the year, so for any month, I guess, um, for this many days, you know. Right, right. But it, but anyway, since it is summertime now, we're going to yes. go, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to play a song about that. All right, sounds good. By this lovely, lovely young lady. Awesome. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's uh, that's some smoking blues right there. I tell you, that's a guy named uh, Philip Sace doing a song called "Blues Ain't Nothing But a Good Woman on Your Mind." Uh, he's playing that at uh, some place called the Silver Dollar. See if it t tells me where that's from. No, I just it don't tell me where the Silver Dollar's at. But that's all right. Uh, Joe Bonamassa featured him, highlighted him last week in one of his emails that he sends out. I got a couple from. Joe each week, one of uh, Joe's music and one of somebody else. So, Philip Sace, yeah, yeah, good stuff. Before that, for the Mighty Moose Girl, we had Charlie Parr doing cheap wine. And we kicked it off with Janis Joplin in Summertime. So, uh, good music there, boy, I tell you what. <laughs> if you like good music, that is, you know. If you don't like good music, I, I don't know what to tell you, really. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you there, Moose? I am here. All right. What do you think about awesome. that? What do you think about that last guy there, Philip Sace? Pretty hot. Yeah, he's jamming, man. He tears it up. Yep. Sucking hot. Tears it up. Yep. <laughs> I like that. Speaking of tearing it up, I'm going to go see Dead and Company tomorrow night at Alpine Valley. Right on. Right fucking on. Yeah, that, that'll... I have yeah, I have not been to Alpine Valley for a while, many years, many, many years. And you have not seen Dead and Company. I have never seen Dead and Company yet. 
the two years they've been performing, two, three years, have not seen one show yet. So, I mean, I've seen them online. I, you know, but not in person, not live. Right, right. But I did see Phil Lesh at Revival with his, um, the, the Terrapin family band, which is actually his two sons that are in the band with him. Yeah. Now, how, far, had, how far how um, far of a drive is Alpine Valley? Ooh, it's going to be brutal. It's going to be about... I, I'm not going straight there, so it's going to be like five hours total drive. It's about four hours if I went straight there to Alpine Valley, but I have to go stop somewhere on the way. So... It won't be that bad, though. So that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah, it'll be fine. It's supposed to be nice weather, so it's gonna be fine. Yeah, it's just a it's just a one day affair. Yes. Well, it's tonight. They played tonight, and they're playing tomorrow night too. But like when I first saw when this show when they first announced the dates of the Alpine Valley shows, I was like, well, I'm taking off Friday for Revival. I took off Friday for Blue Ox. I can't take off. You know, I'm not going to be able to take off that Friday to do both shows, so I figured I could go on Saturday to well, the dead, right? Yeah, yeah. The dead and cold. And so, um, I was going to buy, like, just lawn tickets, you know. They still have them online. I don't think, I don't know if Alpine sells out. I'm sure it can, but um, they still had tickets available as, as of yesterday, so. Now, I remember um, when they did that first show at Chicago. Yep, Chicago. And, and, and it was it was crazy, right? I mean, it was all the parties. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was great. It was awesome. I mean, okay, the Grateful Dead's a band, that, a band that evolves, right? Like, they've lost other members of the band. You know? Yeah. Um, so they're kind of a band that just, I mean, they're getting, well, they're getting old. I mean, Phil Lesh is like 74. <laughs> He looked great at yeah, Revival, yeah. though. He's I mean, good. he looked awesome. He He's had some health problems in the past, but with diabetes and stuff. But he looked awesome. For 74 years old, to be able to get up there and jam out with his songs like that, it was awesome. Right. I mean, I saw the first the first song tonight at Alpine. They did a live stream on Facebook, Nugs.tv or whatever. Yeah. Bobby's looking good. I mean, he's getting up there in age. Well, let me just say, at 74, you're not getting old. You done got there. You are there. old, right. <laughs> no, no. Well, he's my dad's age. Yeah. So, it, yeah, that's old. I mean, to be able to go up there and keep rocking out and playing bass and jamming, and it was, I mean, it was amazing. And it, Plus, at Revival, it was so cool, because, like, I was literally five feet away from him, you know? Right. You know what I mean? At, right. at, at some point. You know, I was I, I was right there in the front. I was literally five feet away from the guy. Sure. Which is awesome. I mean, it was just, yeah. So now to be able to go tomorrow, see, I was going to get him online tonight when I got home from work, but then my friend who was going to go, her boyfriend couldn't get off work, so she had two tickets. She's like, oh, I have two tickets to sell. You know anyone interested? I'm like, yeah, me. <laughs> and it's the actual paper ticket, so I'll be able to have, like, a ticket stub to hang on. You know what I mean? Great, yeah. Like, that's one thing I don't like about online tickets sometimes, is you, if you print them at home, you it's like on regular paper. You know, it's not like a, where you have a ticket stub. Yeah, it's not, it's not the old, old school, old school stuff that we're used to. Right, exactly. And so... It's kind of lame if I can do the print at home, but at the same time, sometimes I have to do it that way because I don't order them fast enough for them to be mailed to me. You know what I mean? Right. For the actual hard copy of the ticket to be mailed, so I I get the paper. But this is awesome that I have an actual ticket stub. Yeah, no, I, I got I got a batch of old ticket stubs from. I do too. From way I've back kept in the all day. my old ticket stubs. I have <laughs> the ones from when I went to Grateful Dead in Chicago. Yeah. You know, so. Um. 
I still, I've kept all my ticket stuff that I, you know, if I'm lucky enough to keep it, it's still in good shape, you know what I mean? Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I know people that, like, actually put them in a frame. Yeah, I, I've, you know, I've seen that. They put all their ticket stubs together in a frame and, and yeah. hang on the wall. Yeah, you probably need but a lot. I think of, I'm going to do that. I might do that. You need a lot of damn frames after a while. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. I probably need, like, two or three frames. Well, you know, I have, I have much concert memorabilia, a lot. Yeah. Even my my concert t-shirts, I cannot throw them all. I can't get rid of them. Sure. So I have a tool. I'm just put them well, all. I, I've, I've worn out a lot of. <laughs> I, I've, what? I've I've worn out a lot of concert tees. Well, me too, but <laughs> not completely. Where you get to throw all, where you got to throw them all. No, my, like, my Aerosmith shirt, boy, that thing got. <laughs> yeah, I think I worn out. <laughs> yeah, did you ever have the Led Zeppelin one with the like? No, I never saw head? Led Zeppelin, man. I... You never did? No, I never got to see really? Led Zeppelin. Yeah. I never did either, but really, Grim didn't see them. No, I never saw them. Wow, that's crazy. I would have thought you would have seen them at one point in your life. No, no. Huh. ACDC, well, Judas, Judas Priest. Priest. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, Judas Priest. <laughs> yeah, Judas Priest, ACDC, Boys to Call, uh, Pat Travers, right. uh, nice. the Rolling Stones. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, Kiss. Kiss, or absolutely, Kiss? several times. Uh, right. Yes. Yeah. Um, How about Rush? I never saw Rush. How about Pink Floyd? Never saw Pink Floyd. Yeah, I've heard Pink, back in the day, Pink Floyd was the concert. Everyone's like, you gotta go to the Pink Floyd concert. Yeah. You know I mean, Which, I love Pink Floyd, but I never saw him live. But everyone back in the day, like in the '80s, it was like whatever tour it was that year. Back in the '80s, 1980 something. Yeah. Everyone said that that's the best concert ever. You gotta go see Pink Floyd. I, I love Skin Skinner. Light show. What? I love Skinner in concert. I saw them four times. Wow. The yeah. Original, the original be Skinner awesome. before the crash. Oh wow. Yeah. That's cool. So, that's but, but cool. I, I like my I, first I, concert was the Go Go's, <laughs> and then like my second concert was the Cars. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you're like seven years older than me. All right, shut up. Well, my my first concert, I think I was thirteen at the time. I think I was thirteen or fourteen. And and, uh, and um, I I just left the house, got out of bus, went downtown. And there was this. Uh, <laughs> Little, nice. con little concert hall there it was uh, craft work and strobs. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, and I just went there by myself, you know, and some some big old hippie out front trying to sell me acid. And, uh, oh, and, nice! You uh, should have taken a while. I, I, I was like this, just this little punk kid. I didn't You're know any better. Yeah, I was 14, like, hey, get away from right? me, you! Get away from me, you hippie! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I had I had weed, but I, I was acid. What's that? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I've seen uh, a lot of shows, a lot of shows, a lot of punk shows too, at a lot of little places. It's all their moans. Yeah, many times. nice. I've seen tons of concerts. I mean, when I first started going to concerts, I had no idea that I would be like this festival concert person. You know what I mean? I, I had no idea, but here I am. Yeah, I saw the Ramones so many times, boy. And, oh yeah, uh, yeah. Sure. I was right, you know, right, standing right, right at the front of the stage, and 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 there's Johnny Ramone standing right there, just you know, I could have grabbed his pant leg. I... <laughs> nice, yeah. Isn't that awesome? When Joan that Jett saw like, her that way too. Jo Joan Jett, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, literally right there. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's it was cool. Fun. I mean, it was yeah, what? It was just fun, you know, being a, you know, in that in that era when I was there. Music is awesome. It is awesome. I mean, it's a healing thing. It's just a. It it just it makes life just better. Hey, you know, we didn't say hi to the people in the chat here. No, we didn't. No. Hi, people in the chat. <laughs> Hello, people. Thanks for tuning in. This week, Friday, we got through another week. Woohoo! Oh, this was the early days of uh, Kraftwerk, Hans. Uh, it was, it was that, just after that Autobahn album came out. And, uh, yeah, they, they were very interesting. It was this 
acoustically perfect place that I was in the uh, uh, San Diego Civic something or the other uh, Civic Theater Civic Arena and it was it was it was only small it was probably only held five thousand people um, but but the sounds they were making were amazing and uh, the band that opened for them Strobs they were not very good. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's the nicest thing I could say about Strobs. Not very good. <laughs> uh, I don't even know how, how do you spell that. Strobs, S T R A W B S. Like okay, never like, even heard of that band. Like, like strawberries, except minus, oh, okay, minus, gotcha. the, minus the berries part. Gotcha. <laughs> so speaking of fruit, <laughs> fruit. <laughs> I fucking go to, okay, okay, so I go to Cub in the cities, right? And this, because this is where the graduation party was at. And I went there on Friday, you know, to get ready for it, because it was on Saturday. All right. And so Saturday morning, I'm going to Cub to buy some fruit, right? Right. So this is the grocery store at my brother's house. And they're supposed to be, like, low prices and blah, 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 right? And so I go there, and I couldn't believe how much the price, how the prices were. Okay, so they have these little watermelons, right? Okay. Those were five ninety eight or something like that. Something outrageous. Really? And I'm like, I said to my brother's girlfriend, because she went with me, I'm like, I cannot buy this fruit here. She's like, I'm like, I, if I'm going to buy fruit, i got to go somewhere where it's way cheaper. I'm like, this is not cool. This is, like, crazy. She's like, no, I, I, I don't blame you, you know? And so the one produce guy from Cub was standing right there and, she, and he heard my conversation and he's like, that's not something I really want to hear. He's, he was just joking around, you know? And he's like, and we're like, yeah, I'm sorry, dude, but these prices are too high for this fruit. I gotta go somewhere where, I, you know, it's less expensive or whatever. He's like, oh, my mom does the same thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. But anyway, I went to Sam's Club, where I'm a member of Sam's Club, and they have the bigger, the big Seagull's watermelon. For five dollars, right? For six bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah, and just go to a, strawberries just, for just, three bucks. Just go to a, a farmer's market. Strawberry. What? Just go to a farmer's market. Right, but that was it. Was the city that was the graduation party? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And so I'm like, didn't have time to go to a farmer's market. So, <laughs> but no way in hell was I going to buy that cheap, that expensive shit at Cub. It's like no way. Yeah. And so we have all these here. So I'm going to start checking out all these for the fruit, because everyone says that they have the best prices on the fruit. Yeah. And the best quality. So, but I must say that those pineapples that I got from Sam's Club, mm -hmm. they were so awesome. And right. like, I mean, all the fruit was good, but the pineapple was like out of this world. Yeah, like, I, wouldn't oh even, my God. I wouldn't even think of a, uh, you know, one of those warehouse stores for good fruit, but... I did used right. to buy. I did used to buy the Fuji apples at uh, Costco when I was in San Diego, though. Okay. Yeah. Because they they'd sell like a big old tray of Fuji apples for I don't know how much they were, but. They were okay, good. and so cutting up fruit is a pain in the ass <laughs> because you have to. First of all, like the big watermelon I got, I cut it up, you know, and I I put it in the sink and I wash it like I'm washing dishes, right? Yeah. Because that the soap and water is not going to get through that rind, right? So you got to wash it really good because you don't know who's been touching that fucking watermelon. And there was actually still a little bit of dirt left on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, but they say that if you cut the rind, you need to rinse the knife every time. Sure, yeah, you do because, because that's where all... you don't want to cross-contaminate the fruit that's where all the, on the outside. That's where all the poison is, is on the rind, right. so... Right, so... It takes you a long time to do it because. Well, it's best like if you, you know, if you if you got to cut it in half, you just score around the entire fruit, and then right. wa then wash your knife off because you already got a groove through the, through right. the poison. And, right. And but then, the watermelon rind's pretty freaking thick. It's got to be two inches thick. Oh, I know, but you just but you just got to get in there deep enough so that so that you know so that it's wide and deep enough that uh, you, you can make the, the final cut without without worrying about that. No, I hear what you're saying. That's yeah. a good idea. Um, because what I did, what I do is I, well, I wash that, that thing like it was a freaking dish, dish, you know, 
scrubbed yeah. it down, soaked it up, rinsed it off, and I again take my knife and I cut into it, then I rinse it off the knife. Then I cut into it again. Then I rinse off the knife. <laughs> I mean, it's it, yeah. It's it sounds lame. Like back in the day, back when we were kids, we didn't do that. We didn't. Well, they didn't care. spray all these poisons. We didn't poison. fucking cut that shit out and eat it. We didn't like it. You know what I mean? It, it, it no, every, everything wasn't poison back then. Exactly. It wasn't as bad as it is now. <laughs> so. You know. I mean, there was DDT and shit. You yeah. know. But okay. that was. You know. There's been chemicals around for a while, but I think it's worse now more than ever. Oh, because absolutely. Because of Monsanto and all this shit, Roundup and fucking, it's bad, you know? Yeah. Um, but, uh, so anyway, the watermelon, or the pineapple, a girl at work was doing a pampered chef thing, you know? And so I ordered a pineapple cutter, which is basically just like one of those apple cores, you know? Right. Except it's huge for a pineapple, right? Yeah, I've seen them. And so I've never tried it before. I had this thing. I'm like, I'm going to bring that with me. I'm going to try this thing. You know, if I'm getting pineapple, I'm going to try my pineapple cutter, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I, I tried it, and I got all the way, almost all the way through the whole thing. And then I didn't have enough arm strength strength to push it down all the way. Yeah. So it's got kind of like two handles on the side. I had to make Matt do it. Matt had to do the final pushed down. So it worked good, but you've got to have a lot of fucking strength to push that sucker down into that pineapple, you know? Oh, yeah. They're, they're pretty tough fruits. Yeah. And you, there's a circle in the middle. You want to try to get that on the core part. Mm-hmm. But the reason I bought the thing is, like, I'm going to start making pineapple water because it's supposed to be really good for you. It's supposed to be, yeah. Coconut water, too. It's, yep. Coconut water and pineapple water. So it's both really good for you. And so what you do is you take a jar or something and you put some co- pineapple in there, or coconut, or whatever, and then you let it sit in the sun for a little bit, and let that pineapple kind of disintegrate a little bit in the water. And you drink that every day. And it's supposed to be really good for you. Which, I haven't yet to try it, but I'm going to. Well, just don't put the lime in the coconut. No, I won't do that. I won't put the lime in the coconut. <laughs> Anyway, here here in the chat, Hans points out that uh, that Autobahn album was released in 74, so I must have been 14 at the time. There you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, and uh, Kate says she went to Mountain, or Mountain and Jess Rotel were the first concert she paid for. Ooh, although, wow. cool. although she was uh, went to Ario Speedwagon and didn't pay. <laughs> oh, nice. Awesome. Just real tall. I've seen Just Real Tall twice. Yeah. Five. Yeah. Mountain would have been fucking cool. Yeah, been, yeah. Yeah. And and I would have just bypassed Ario Speedwagon. Nah, no interest. Oh, Thank see, you. I loved Ario Speedwagon. <laughs> I, I, that was back in when I was in high school. Man, they were huge when I was in high school. Yeah. They were just huge. Yeah. They were. Keep on loving you. That's one of my favorite songs. Yeah. See, that, that, that was that was not that was not coming across my radio. <laughs> no, it wasn't. But you know, different era, a little bit. Yeah. Well, yeah, you like the, you know, you, you like, like you said, the Go Go's. And yeah, I, and that, that was my first concert. That, 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 that wasn't Go-Go's. happening. But, yeah. The Go Go's, man. <laughs> we got the beat. I can't say that. <laughs> and they, they were they were fine to look at, but oh I didn't God. want to hear them. <laughs> no wonder I'm a dancer. Oh, my boy, don't sing, Mom. Don't yeah. sing. Don't sing. Whatever. <laughs> Please, don't. I'm toned up. It's really bad. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, they got technology to, like, try to combat that. But, anyway, so did you hear about, oh, no, I just lost it. What the hell? Okay, here we go. Did you hear about this? Tell me. Teen jogger who accidentally crossed the U.S. border from Canada is detained for two weeks. Okay. A teenager out for a beach, beachside jog in Canada was detained by U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers when she accidentally entered the country while stopping to snap a photo. On May 21st, Cidella, Cidella Roman, 19, a French citizen, was running along the beach near White Rock, British Columbia, when she stepped onto a dirt path to avoid the high tide, 
reports Canadian news site CBC News. Roman paused to take a photo of the scenery and was suddenly approached by two American Border Patrol agents. An officer stopped me and started telling me I had crossed the border illegally, Roman told the CBC. I told him I had not done it on purpose and I didn't understand what was happening. She was staying in North Delta, British Columbia with her mother to complete a work-study program. At the time, she wasn't carrying the ID, the outlet reports. Officers who claimed Roman had illegally entered the U.S. in Blaine, Washington, detained her and took her to the Tacoma Northwest Detention Center. They put me in cage vehicles and brought me to their facility. They asked me to remove all my personal belongings and my jewelry. They searched me everywhere. Then I understood I was, it was getting very serious and I started to cry a bit. Eventually, she was able to speak to her mom, go to the detention center. Um, it was just unfair that there was nothing, no sign at the border. It's like a trap. Anybody can be caught at the border like this. Yeah. Well, I, I always tell people, you got to be careful. you got to watch out. Them Canadians are sneaky. You know, everybody's always <laughs> worried about this Mexican, yeah. the Mexican border, but it's, the, the trouble is going to come from the north. Canadian that's, 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 that, those are the trouble people right up there. Oh yeah, yeah. do you think they? Canadian joggers. <laughs> Scary stuff, man. And she's taking pictures. She's probably a spy. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. But anyway, that I just, it just caught my eye there. <laughs> yeah. It's a Yahoo story. I fucking know, but it popped up on there. Yeah, yeah. them sneaky-ass Canadians. Yep. Not the <laughs> Although, I might want to move there now. And and she's a French girl. Although, I like... I, I'm not against Canada. I love Canada, actually. <laughs> I love Kanakistan. <laughs> I've been all over Kanakistan, except for the middle part. Uh, I'm not against Canada either, but I like giving them a hard time. <laughs> I've been on both sides. Of course, I'm not against Mexico either. <laughs> so, uh, so I have not. I have not been to Mexico ever. Really? I've been to Puerto Rico. I've been to Jamaica. Well, I, I say I've been to Mexico, but I've only been to Baja. Yeah. You know, I, I haven't been in, in the main that's body. Part of What's that? That's part of. Uh, well, it's part of California, ain't it? Well, no, it's it's, it's Mexico. It, oh, okay. It, it, it's Baja, California, well, but it's Actually, it's California Mexico. was all Mexico at one point, basically. I don't think all of it, but part of it. Uh, not, maybe not the northern part, but... Yeah. But, yeah, no. But, uh, yeah, I've been down... Uh, I don't know how far down in there. Pretty far down... Pretty far pretty far down... Uh, you said it's California, though. It's Baja, California, but it's, it's Mexico. It's part of Mexico. Why do they call it California, then? It's Baja, California, as in below California. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it. so it's Mexico. It is Mexico, but it's okay. Baja. All right. Baja. Yeah, I thought it was Cal part of California. There you go. Baja, California, Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Anyway, it's fun down there. I, well, it was fun down there back in the day, but... Well, know. yeah, nowadays it'd be like suicide. Well, I, I don't know, but I mean, a lot of people still go down there, but... Yeah, I know. Yeah, no, not like it was. Not I like just, it was. No, it's it's way different than it was. That used to be the hot spot to go. Oh, yeah. We used to go down there, you know. Yeah. Tijuana and Ensenada. We place to go. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's all turned to shit. I'm sorry, but it has. What happened? And that I blame. I mean, okay, so we're talking about border. If you know, everyone's talking. A lot of people are talking about borders lately. Yeah. And it's like to me, a border is on a map. Okay, I don't see no black lines between Minnesota and Wisconsin. You know. No, no. I, don't I, you see, know, them. Take, I take, see a river. Take, take a, a look at the. Uh, you know, take it. Take a look at some of the pictures that are t taken from orbit. Of the Earth, right? And you don't see no borders. <laughs> you don't see no lines, no black lines. Nope. Right there. So they exist on maps. Yeah. But yeah, it's, nowhere it's, else. It's just creations of government. That's all. Yes, and this is my point: is like some people are all fucking butt hurt because all oh, these illegal immigrants are coming into this country. I guarantee you, this last wave 
this has been going on for... Oh, yeah, it's, it's just... It's, my it's fucking a big... great-grandparents were little children. They were fucking immigrants, okay? This is all just stupid distraction. That's all this is. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you guys are... You're getting all fucking... Your, your panties are all on a fucking wad, which is exactly what they want you to do. You're playing... You're buying into this fucking... The mainstream media story... And you're not fucking thinking. Right. You're letting it be a distraction to you. When you know, deep down, unless you're really fucking hooked, you know this is bullshit. Absolutely. You know it is. But right. yet, no, nope, I'm going to fucking, no, I'm going to eat this up. Eat this mainstream media shit up. That's what it is. What? Really? Are you going to do that? And then he, you know, you know, it, 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 you can kind of see the right in the wall too, because okay, oh, they get people all up in arms. They're separating children from their parents at the border. <laughs> oh no! And then, you, all of a sudden, a week later, he's signing this thing. Oh, look at how great I am! I'm doing an executive order to stop this from happening. But then he comes out and he fucking taught. He contradicts himself. Or he says, well, there's a difference between immigrants and illegal immigrants. Uh, really? You guys can't see this? Uh, it's, it's just a clusterfuck, you know. This bullshit? It, it, it is. It, it, and it, I mean, it's like they, they're going after all this stuff like it's something new that just started. Right, that's my, my and, point. And, and it's been going on for, for, for decades. Thing. Decades this has been happening. Yes, decades. And, and um, so, uh, whatever. This is nothing new. But but they're and trying to they're act, trying to they're trying to make you know like a big thing out of it, and it's. I swear, people like do a reset, like in like subconsciously, they're like okay, because people are still hopeful and believe in government on some level. They're like okay, well there's a new guy. Maybe I don't fucking like that bitch, but at least there's a new president. So maybe things will be different. <laughs> maybe things will be better. It's like yeah. And then, then you know a year goes by, you're like, what the fuck. Nothing's better. It's it's not. They said it was gonna be better. No, but you, it's not you can. It's fucking better. You can track it's the. Worse. You can track the progress of the agenda, all the way back to at least LBJ till now, and it doesn't yes. matter who's sitting there in the in the White House. Nothing changes. It just keeps on going on, yes. getting further yes. and further into the shithole. <laughs> More, more and more control over you, less and less freedom for you, and that it just keeps going on and on that way, regardless of who's in there. And you may right. say, "Oh, well, I, we had our guy in there, or, and so it was great," or their guy was in and there, so it was terrible. Just to please, and, uh, it's two factions of the same fucking team. Okay, if that if it was a truly a two party system, there would be solidarity in that party. But there isn't, because Republicans vote for Democrat bills, and Democrats vote for Republican fucking bills. So don't fucking tell me that they're two different things. And it don't matter they anyway. They, they, don't write, they don't write the bills, they don't read the bills. Right. <laughs> they're two different factions of the same fucking team. It's all so ridiculous. all you people that are bickering over who's better, Democrat or Republican, you're wasting your fucking time. And ours. Yeah, you're wasting your fucking time. <laughs> Going back and forth, Republican, Democrat. You know what? It goes so much above and beyond that that you guys are fucking stunted. You're stalled with this subject yeah. when you could be doing, learning more and doing more and realizing more, but yet you're stuck on this shit. It's like, really? Uh, you mean, well, you, you, you might know, as well drink the government Kool-Aid because you're stuck. That's when, what they want you to be. <laughs> When they, when you get to actually vote for who's the head banker of the world, let me know. Right. You actually get to vote for the real they're, deal. They're the ones running the show. It ain't these asshats that you see there. But people are like, no, 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 that's not true. No, you're wrong, Grim. I know, I know. You're, you're fucked up, Grim. That's not I, true. I know, I know. I got, I got a broken head. I'm you're no good. You're the world. I'm no good. 
president of the United States is the leader of the free fucking world. Didn't you know that, Grim? And he makes oh, yeah, he's the leader himself. of the universe. Yeah. He makes his decisions himself. Master no one else of the universe. <laughs> he is the man. He's, he's he man. Yeah, he can do whatever the fuck he wants. All right, let's hear some more music here. <laughs> yeah, that's what people think. They're like, no, you're wrong. Yeah. There's no one else over here, the president. No, the president's the man, the leader of the free world. What? <laughs> okay, well, just keep on so believing that now. Wh where is this free world you speak of? Exactly. What is this <laughs> free world? What? Uh, anyway, let's hear some more music right here. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Social distortion. Thank you so much. That's uh, Orianti there doing Stevie Ray's Pride and Joy and doing it quite well. Before that, for Mr. Sock Puppet, a little country tune by a band called Blackberry Smoke doing a song called Too High. And we kicked it off with Social Distortion covering Johnny Cash's Ring of Fire. Okay, wait. That was Blackberry Smoke? Blackberry Smoke. With the long hair dude? Yeah, I guess he had long hair. Yeah. That's the guy from the Wood Brothers. Wood Brothers, okay. The Wood Brothers, yep. That I love the Wood Brothers. Oh my God, that is the guy from the Wood Brothers. Well, it's one of them. All right. The, the, the I, I, uh, yeah. Um. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> like that's why I'm like, oh, the Wood Brothers. I love them. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Didn't know it was not the Wood Brothers. Yeah, that I, is the I, don't, from the Brothers. I don't. I don't really know much about that band. Um, like They're said, good. A, a I've seen them live a couple of times. Yeah, it sounds like a country song to me. That's all I know. It, that was a country song, definitely. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, but there's a fine line between bluegrass and country. But this modern pop country they got now, I'm sorry, but the old school country kicks its ass. You know, the Johnny Cash and the Waylon Jennings and the Willie Nelson and the Patsy Cline. That kicks all this new country's ass. The Merle Haggard. Sure. That's just my taste. I mean, some people really like the new country. I'm not, I'm not saying there aren't good songs or good artists, but it's just not the same, I guess, is what I'm saying. Yeah. No, okay. But the, to me, there's a fine line between country and bluegrass. There is. You know, it's a blues, bluegrass, uh, country. Right, right. There's crossovers going on. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah. Like the other Sunday when you were playing, it was a... Who was it? Anyway, I said it sound like elevator music. Oh, oh yeah, Ta Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. Yeah. And that, to me, was jazz. That wasn't the blues. Well, there's a crossover there, too, for sure. That's why I said it reminded me of, like, elevator music. You know what I mean? <laughs> because it was jazz. It wasn't, and that's why I was surprised that you, like, liked it. Because you said you don't like jazz. Uh, it's Taj, man. I, I, I dig you Taj. You said you don't like jazz, though. <laughs> I, I, know, I know, but, it, but I, I dig Taj. He's cool. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> so I was just surprised. I'm like, okay. That was a total crossover, though, song there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that well, you was know, jazz. It's like, like Ray Charles, he's got a bunch of that stuff, too. And, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, how, can, how can you fault him? You know, he's he, he was awesome. Right. No, um, I, I hear that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's all good. It is. Music is good. Yeah. Um, I've been away yeah. for a couple of weeks, so I'm just not... Oh, yeah, here we go. This one actually is from Goober. From what now? From Gooberzilla. 
Oh, okay. Okay, so now this video really pisses me off. I mean, I'm just going to give it a little bit of heads up here. Um, this video pisses me off because not the first... There's two things that happen. There's a couple of things that happen in this video. I'll link it to you, Graham. Hang on. And it, it... Really, people? Come on. This was in Alaska. And... I like, I am I have a proclivity to this story because I do, like, call myself Moose Girl, so, there you go. But anyway, I this was like two weeks ago that I got this link, and of course I was not here for, for a couple it. weeks. So, there you go. <laughs> oh, God, I gotta try to remember how to do this now. That's okay, it's, you know, hurry, but... <laughs> I'm sorry, but humans are dumb. Like, we like to fuck with shit. You know, some people fuck with shit more than other humans. Some humans fuck with shit more than other humans. But I don't understand some of the fucking with shit. Like, let's respect things in nature and, like, you know, not be assholes. I mean, to me... Na Mother Nature will kick your fucking ass. So you're stupid if you want to fuck with Mother Nature. I mean, that's all I'm saying. I mean, come on. Right. Mother Nature should never be taken for granted, for one thing. The planet, the Earth, it's called common freaking sense. Should be. Yeah, but it's so lacking. <laughs> all right. Well, let's see what we got here. Yeah, okay, so here you go. Do, I, do you want to hear it, or you just want to watch it? Just watch it. All right. All right, so you there you go. You can play the sound. You can play the sound. That's fine. That's all right. You got a moose and their baby by the side of the road. There. In Anchorage. And you, and you got some guy on a bicycle going up the, the, going up yep. the thing there, the pass. The moose says, no, 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 none of that. Oh, I got a baby nah, here. No, nah, no, nah, you're not coming. You're not coming. Oh, he's, he's got two babies. Okay. See how close it is to the highway there, though? Yeah, it's right there. And she's on the That's wrong people. side of the... She's, a, she, she, she's, a, she's on the wrong he side of the... Touch, the moose didn't even touch the bike. No, he no, he, he he got scared and ran away. And it's probably a good thing right. that he did, because... Right. <laughs> and here Wait, comes some, watch what happens next, though. Here comes some pig, and the moose babies run off. And the moose runs off. Oh, the, this is, look at how they almost, they all, they come right, they almost hit the fucking baby. Yep, and they go, they, 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 the cop. that ain't a cop. Well, it? whatever he is, he's somebody with a orange vest Oh, on. I see the orange vest, yep. But yeah. he almost seriously hits the freaking mooses. Anyway, they, they just go up a little bit oh. up the path there, they stop. But it's like. Uh, yeah, I know, they're, they're rude. It, it's just, come on, people. I mean, they they didn't need to drive up that close, for one thing. They almost here, hit here those babies. The, here comes the moose, just, hey, get out of here, get out of here. Got my girls here, got my kids. There's a fence there, the moose can't go nowhere. Right. You know, where's that moose gonna fucking go? Uh, you know, who knows? Now they're trying to scare her away and crap. It's like, what where do you expect that moose to go? There's the fence. But anyway, that that's just like really Really. It, you know <laughs> Pox, nice request. Um <laughs> I'm a I'm a big fan of Beck too. Not I'm not talking Jeff Beck, although I'm a big fan of his. But Beck just uh, Beck in general. I yeah, love, I like Beck. Uh, I like many of his albums. He's actually coming to Eau Claire. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I mean, the Verb Pipe was here last night. Oh. They, they were like a one-hit wonder band, but the one song was pretty good that made it to like the top 40. But Which, which song it was, was that? It was Thursday night. Oh, shit. I can't think of the name of it. But they had like a one-hit wonder. They were they had a couple of maybe good songs, but like that made it to the top 40 or whatever. But that would have been cool to see, but I just, Thursday night, oh. The Beck thing, I might go to. I think that's also on a Thursday, but that might be worth checking out. He's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, I like yeah. 
Yeah. One man band. One man amazing band. Right, yeah. He's he's talented. Yeah. No doubt. Anyway, I got some couple of health related issue stories okay. here. Okay. Well, uh keep you healthy stories, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, the first one is from uh mnhopkins.blogspot.com Stranger in a Strange Land. And I'm not going to go through all these for you, but I'll just give you some highlights. It's 51, and you know I'm a big lover of this substance, 51 fantastic uses for baking soda. Uh, anyway, it says uh, baking soda uh, helps regulate pH, keeping a substance neither too acidic nor too alkaline. When baking soda comes in contact with either an acidic or alkaline substance, its natural effect is to neutralize that pH. That's the key word there. Neutralize. Beyond that, baking soda has the ability to retard further changes in the pH balance known as buffering. The dual capacity of neutralizing and buffering allows baking soda to do such things as neutralize acidic odors like in your fridge as well as maintain neutral pH like in your laundry water which helps boost your detergent's power. So put a little bit of Baking soda in there in your in your laundry and, and you'll get better washing from if you use detergent. It's a simple. I have used baking soda in my laundry before. Now I use vinegar. I right, use vinegar. Well, it works really good. It's a simple reaction, but one that has far-reaching effects for a number of cleaning and deodorizing products. First category is personal care, and it says make toothpaste. And I've been using baking soda toothpaste for several years now. But it's nasty. It's not nasty. Do you flavor it at all? Yeah, I use mint extract. Okay, so yeah. you just yeah, it's, it's it's make a paste and then um, yeah, it, it's it's of... it's coconut oil, baking powder, and mint extract. That's it. Okay. And cool. you just mix it up to a nice consistency. With and you got to put quite a bit of uh, mint extract in there, actually. And do you do you feel that it freshens your breath and everything? Oh, absolutely, like absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. Then it also he says you can use it to freshen your mouth with a half glass of water. Uh, soak oral right. appliance, which is what retainers, mouthpieces, and dentures. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, anyway, facial scrub. Uh, uh, get rid of your deodorant. Just use some baking soda under your arms. Uh, is it is perfect? It's an antacid, of course. Everybody knows that. I think. Um, yeah. Good for insect bites and uh, itchy skin. Uh, helps your hair. Uh, anyway, there's more of that than cleaning uh, for soft surface scrub. Hand wash dishes with pot in pots and pans, fresh in sponges, and tons of stuff. Clean floors, clean furniture, uh, clean your cloth diapers. <laughs> All right, uh, batteries. Yeah, it's good for batteries uh, on the on the, uh, the terminals. Uh, deodorizing. It deodorizes pretty much everything. Um, uh, miscellaneous camping cure all. You gotta have it with you if you go camping. It's a dishwasher, pot scrubber, hand cleanser, deodorant, toothpaste, fire extinguisher, many other uses. It's great for extinguishing fires. You should always have a, uh, a, 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 a at least a small box of, of baking soda near, near where your stove is in case you ever get a, a, a fire on the stove there. Yeah, yeah, I always have yeah. baking soda. On Boom! Put that put that I... fire put that fire out. And nothing flat. Right, and it then you have one in your refrigerator open, so it's a deodorizer. Right, right, and it's good for your yep. septic tank and your drains. Yep, uh, I, I I use baking soda in my drains all the time because I have a disposal on one side of my drains, you know? Yeah. One of the dis the drains of the disposer, and so that thing gets gunky and smelly sometimes. So I just freaking dump some baking soda down there and let it sit overnight, and right. it's... It, Neutralizes the odor. Totally and and, and, and yeah. since you were talking about the uh, the uh, um, watermelon, watermelons earlier, oh, yeah. uh, it is a fruit and vegetable scrub. Baking soda is a safe way to clean dirt and residue off there you fresh, go. fresh fruit and vegetables. Just sprinkle a little bit on a clean, damp sponge, scrub and rinse. Wow! Da -da -da. Another way to clean your uh, vegetables as right. well. Right. Good. So uh, there is Which that. Which is probably better than soap. I mean, soap won't hurt a watermelon, but you might not want to put, like, soap on a strawberry. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, so no. baking soda would be <laughs> good for that, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, not only that, but you probably don't want to wind up eating the soap. Um, and no, you, you don't. can eat no. baking soda. <laughs> baking soda is great to, 
to 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 digest. It's awesome. It's awesome stuff. Uh, here's something you might not have thought about before, and uh, that I have been thinking about doing, but have not done myself. Ten reasons to bring back lard. And you go, ooh, lard. But um, <laughs> it's actually great stuff. Um, it, it says, in recent generations, lard has seemed to completely disappear from kitchens. Uh, until the 1900s, lard was a staple cooking fat across the globe. It was the secret to perfect flaky pie, pie pastry. Uh, crispy fried chicken, melt-in-your-mouth biscuits, and luscious gravy. Now, when people hear, hear the term lard, they immediately conjure up the vision of clogged arteries. It's time to set the record straight. Lard is a healthy cooking fat and deserves to make a comeback in kitchens everywhere. And just to give you the uh, bullet points here, lard is heat-stable. And it's something that you're going to have problems with with a lot of various oils, cooking oils. Lard is heart healthy. Did you get that? Heart healthy. Lard. I got it. <laughs> An analysis of more than 300,000 people published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition shows that there is no evidence that saturated fat consumption raises the risk of heart disease. A low-fat diet has been shown to increase triglycerides, which is a risk factor for heart disease. Uh, there's a whole bunch of bullet points here on, on that particular one, but that yes, it is. Uh, oh, let me read this 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 line here. Lard is an animal fat. It is high in saturated fat and cholesterol. This doesn't mean that it raises my my heart risk my risk for heart disease. The per pervasive myth that animal fats increase the risk of heart disease is just that a myth. Yes. <laughs> That's why they used to say butter is bad for you. No, you know what's bad for you? Margarine. Margarine, margarine three is three molecules away from plastic. And, 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 so and the stuff they have like now is not even too. the stuff they have now is even worse than margarine. They, they yeah, just, it's terrible. They just it, call it, it spread. It, it, <laughs> yeah, it's just fucking nasty. You're better off eating real fucking butter and real fucking anything. Right. It says lard is neutral flavored, so you don't have to worry about the you know various flavors from various oils that you might get. Right. Uh, lard is economical. Uh, lard is high in vitamin D, which most which helps with depression because which most people are deficient D. in. Most people are deficient right. in vitamin D. Mm -hmm. Lard is sustainable. It lasts a long time on the shelf. There. Lard is local. Lard is great for baking. Lard is a healthy source of cholesterol. Lard ranks number 18 in foods richest in cholesterol. And lastly, and I don't know how important this is, it says it's traditional. Lard is traditional. <laughs> so, I, I, I don't know. But, you know, most people have, have backed off of, of uh, using lard, you know, it's, uh, got got a bad name to it, a bad a, a bad uh, brand, I guess. But uh, it's good for you. So think about that next time you're at the grocery store looking at uh, different cooking oils, oils and such. Uh, right. That, that lard is a, a viable option for nice. you. And finally, on the health items here. Something you can probably mostly all get behind. Mm -hmm. Not a surprise, and we've probably talked about this in other ways, but from the Daily Mail. Drinking four cups of coffee a day could help the heart grow stronger and repair itself from damage. Lard ass, yeah. <laughs> so, coffee's not only good to keep you being healthy, but it can also repair the damage that nice. has been done previously. And it says caffeine may news. boost processes <laughs> which are important to repairing heart cells. Experts say, experts say, <laughs> love that phrase, caffeine protects the heart from aging, uh, obese, and pre-diabetic mice. Uh, well, I don't even know how they got that. Anyway, researchers <laughs> hope their findings will improve ways of protecting people's hearts. They say drinking caffeine 
could be particularly beneficial for old people. Now, do they, old? Yeah, I don't what? know. I don't know that they did define what <laughs> old people are here. Um, right. But I do wonder, and and I do believe that their definition of four cups a day. I think they're talking about an eight ounce cup. I, I don't know. I drink more than that. <laughs> I drink like probably ten to sixteen a day. Yeah, each, each of my cups, mugs of coffee, right. is at least three cups. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm 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 on I'm on the safe side there. Um, yeah, I'll probably never die because I drink a lot of coffee. Um, <laughs> But it says pensioners, which I guess that's a British term for old people, um, should drink four cups of coffee a day to protect and repair their heart muscle. Uh, levels of caffeine, four cups of coffee, protect healthy, healthy, healthy blood vessels, and repair the heart after a heart attack. So if you had a heart attack, start guzzling the coffee. <laughs> there you go. Start drinking some coffee. Coffee. Uh, and it also lowers the risk for diseases. Uh, such as heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and stroke. You got diabetes? Drink some coffee. Drink a lot of coffee. There you go. Yep. Yep. Coffee is good. It's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's good for you. So. <laughs> and hey, Kahlua, sure, Kahlua's good. Why not? Yep. <laughs> Bailey's and coffee. <laughs> no, I have a, I have a, I have a 12-cup percolator. And yep, and three, three three uh, three uh, mugs and I'm and it's empty. <laughs> right, and I have I I put a little bit of coconut oil on my coffee. Yeah, I, it just I like it. It enhance it it adds to it somehow. Right, right. It's pretty cool. Okay, I missed this the other day, but apparently Kate did not miss this, uh, and and she okay. posted a link here, and um, well, I don't know if she posted that link. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to live forever, uh, I hope. Who is? I don't know, but Gr Chloe says Grimnir is going to live forever, and she likes that. Which, uh, you know, that that's like a curse. That's uh, Who wants to live forever? What was that? That was a Queen song. Who wants to live forever? Um, anyway, uh, Matt Guitar Murphy died on uh, I, I saw that. June 15th, the Blues Brothers are guitarist, and it noted that Sideman was 88 years old. Wow. Uh, Matt Guitar Murphy, best known as one of the stalwarts of the Blues Brothers Band, and a renowned sideman uh, with Howlin' Wolf, Memphis Slim, Muddy Waters, James Cotton, and many others, has died. He was 88 years old. His death was confirmed by his nephew, Floyd Murphy. Murphy gained his biggest audience as a member of the band uh, of the band in the Blues Brothers movies. Okay, that's a weird way of saying that. Um appearing as the beleaguered husband of the cafe owner, Aretha Franklin, when she yeah, was saying, Thank! <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'll give you the article here on, uh, on Matt Guitar Murphy, and we are going to play a track by Matt Guitar Murphy. Nice. Right here. Enjoy, right now. everyone. Yeah. This is called Murphy's Boogie. From 1963. Now, let's... Ah, yes, indeedy. That there is Jeff Beck with Amelda May doing Shangri-La's Walk-In. Remember... Walking in the sand. Uh, before that, Jeff Beck again, but this time with Beth Hart, uh, live in 2017, uh, doing Purple Rain, Princess Purple Rain. Uh, let's see if it says who these other people were that were in there. I uh, don't see it listed. They, they listed all the all the folk that were in that video, but there was a, a, a lot of folks in there up on the stage along with uh, Jeff or Jeffrey Arnold Beck. <laughs> I didn't know that was his middle name. Um, <laughs> Beth Hart. Uh, but it doesn't list all the other folks that were up there on the stage. Um, and I don't even see it in the comments here on that. But uh, just a great group of folk. And we kicked it off there with Matt Guitar Murphy. 
doing uh, Murphy's Boogie. Rest in peace, Mr. Murphy. And uh, that's all I can say. Rest in peace. I love the Blues Brothers. And imagine that uh, many of you also enjoyed them quite a bit. Blues Brothers. Yep. So, there's that. <laughs> So, anyway, Moose, you there? Moose, Moose, Moose. Moose, Moose, Moose. <laughs> I know she's here. I see her chatting away. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I'm i sure that if I was some welfare mama pumping out fucking six kids or something and living off the government doll, that the criticism in this chat room would be way worse. Okay, but yet it's I've been working forty hours a, a week job. I've been at the same job for four years. I raised my fucking twin boys pretty much by myself. They're, they, I made it. They, they're alive. They're eighteen. And they're fucking alive. They graduated high school. Which right. yeah, the education system, whatever the fuck. Criticize me all you fucking want, but I fucking guarantee you. If I was sitting in there talking about my life, saying, oh, I'm so welfare mom, I'm pumping out six kids, I live off the government, I live off food stamps, the criticism toward me would be way harsher. I would be like a pariah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, I know that I put myself out there because I'm on a radio show, and I've been on a radio show for about ten years now, the Freaker's Ball. So I know that I put myself out there and it happens with people, you know, that you get a little bit notoriety or whatever amongst the group, and people think it's okay to fucking question you and call you out. And I get that. I understand that, because I do do a radio show. And I'm not the most informed person. I've never said that I'm the smartest person on the fucking planet. I would never fucking say that. No, I, don't, no. I know that I'm not the fucking smartest person on the fucking planet. Right. Well, who is? So, Nobody but is. But by putting myself <laughs> out there, I get it. I'm going to be, I'm putting myself out there, uh, which means I'm also subjecting myself to criticism. Okay? And I know that, that goes, that's part of it. But yet, you know what? At the same time, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck it. Right. This is what, you know, it, it's, it goes with the fucking deal. Being a radio host, you put yourself out there. I, I voice my opinion. I talk about shit that's personal in my life or whatever. You know, I get it. I, I put myself up for being a subject of, or a target for criticism. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, I don't see a bunch of other motherfuckers going on here and doing the same thing. It's easy to fucking sit back in your fucking office chair, your desk chair, and go, oh, yeah, fuck you, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Sure. But I'm actually putting myself out here. What am I doing? I'm doing a radio show called The Freaker's Ball. It's We're going almost on our 10th year now. Right. So I am doing more than most fucking people do. And I'm working a 40 hour job. And I'm not on fucking food stamps anymore. I am not dead. What stream is that? When I didn't get no child support, I was unemployed for 15 fucking years. In 2000, and, or years, months, in 2008, and people remember that time in my life. Things still going I fine. I actually did a radio show during the day because I was unemployed. And there was no jobs to fucking have at that time. Because the economy, the economy took your shit. Yeah. And then after 15 months, I was only able to find a part-time job, finally. You know? Right. And then I worked that part-time job for like six months, so I finally fucking got a temp full-time job. A temp full-time job. Not even getting insurance benefits or anything. So, criticize me all you motherfucking want. I've been doing a radio show for almost 10 fucking years. I, I have verifiable facts to back that up. That truly has happened. I have been truly doing that for 10 fucking years. Yes. So, yes, I'm doing yeah. more than most people. 
She's done a great and job. And I'm not, I'm not some welfare mama pumping out six kids, living off the government dole. Because those are bad people, right? No, those are fine people. Yeah, I tell you, no, I tell you what, they're looked down upon, Graham. I no, I, I in this I'm chat not, room, they would be looked down upon. I, 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 I would applaud them because I say, if you could get something from from the government and cause it to crash. Take as much as you can. Like, you used to tell me that when I was on food stamps, and people criticized me for being on food stamps when I was on them six years ago or whatever the fuck. You know, you're like, no, fuck that. Take whatever you can. Goddamn right. Crash you that know, system. Before that. I didn't have kids until I was 33 fucking years old. Nope, you're a fine person for that, Pox. Well, not necessarily you know for that, just for being who you are. But, uh, I mean, big deal. come on. <laughs> they you know, they put the freaking system the out level, there. I'm better than you, and I I know better than you, and my opinion means more than yours. And I'm right, you're wrong. This is immature shit. This is non-productive. Absolutely. It's, but, it's but junior but, high school. But, fucking, but you say what? You, you, you really? Say, <laughs> yeah. I mean, fuck. Uh. Where we're supposed to be adults. We're supposed to be, like, sharing information. You know, Goober's always talking about, look around. Look around. Yeah. What, what's everyone doing? What are we going to do? Well, why don't we start fucking thinking about that instead of fucking being all nitpicky and junior high-ish. And all, oh, man, my opinion's right. Well, quit, quit looking I'm at right. it. Quit looking you know, at it. You know, it's quit, like, really? Quit looking at it as... What are we going to do? And say, what am I going to do? Exactly. And uh, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Do your, do your own shit and do it yourself. And, and uh, if you can't uh, make yourself, nobody can make you happy but you. <laughs> you know, I, I, okay, so you know what the weird part about this is? Is I've been criticized for being on food stamps and shit, but I've also been criticized we're working a 40-hour week, and then I'm buying the system because I work a 40-hour week, and I'm working for the man, and blah, 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 blah. So I get it from both fucking angles. Right. I'm fucked if I'm a welfare mama, and I'm fucked if I'm working 40 hours a week. There's going to be someone that's going to be pissed off about it. It's like, what? Yeah, what are you going to do? Fuck them. Yeah, you know, come on. What? <laughs> Give me a break, people. Uh, Whatever. God. Anyway, Booth Girl, you pointed out that you were not the smartest person on the planet. I'm not. I, I would readily admit and, that. And I, I know that I'm not the smartest person on the planet. and okay. I'm pretty sure that none of the people here in uh, RLM chat are the smartest people on the planet. But you know who might be? Who? IBM's new computer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a computer, though. It's not a human thing, it's a computer thing. <laughs> uh, I, IBM unveils an artificial intelligence that can debate with humans. Project Debater. Project Master Debater. Um, IBM's new AI system that can argue, refute, and debate humans. IBM, the global technology giant, showcased an artificial intelligence project that is designed to make logical arguments with humans at an event held at IBM's Watson West site in San Francisco on Monday. Known as Project Master Debater, okay, not the master's not in there, um, a, a champion debater in IBM's AI system, uh, the company has been developing the AI capabilities over the past six years, which includes data-driven speech, writing, and delivery, listening comprehension for identifying key claims made within the speech, and the ability to formulate principled arguments. The company has been staging in-house debates between humans and Project Debater for the last two years. IBM research principal investigator and creator of Project Debater, Noam Slonim, however, it was, uh, first, it was the first ever such live public demonstration of a live debate between humans and IBM's AI system. For those unaware, IBM has a long list of major AI innovations, which also include Deep Blue, the IBM system that took on the chess champion, chess world champion Gary Kasparov, IBM Watson, which beat top human champions on Jeopardy in 2011. Debater's answers come from 
uh, access to hundreds of millions of journal and newspaper articles. See that right there. We don't have that access in our brains. We don't have hundreds of millions of <laughs> journal and newspaper articles and various other re reference sources. So no matter how much you, how knowledgeable you think you are, so your ability to debate uh, based on your knowledge will be destroyed by a computer such as this one. So a debater, Project Debater, had to compete with two human participants, uh, President of the International Debate Society in Israel and Noah Ovida, 2016 National, another Israeli debate champion. I don't know why they're picking these, these guys, but whatever. The opening debate topic was, we should subsidize space exploration. Gober, you get that? <laughs> Followed by, we should increase the use of telemedicine. Uh, both topics were selected from a larger list of potential questions, and besides a brief introduction, none of the debaters' arguments were prearranged. IBM said for each of the two short debates, both sides had to deliver a four-minute opening statement, a four-minute four -minute rebuttal to the other's argument, and a two-minute closing statement. Project Debater, during the first debate with uh, Oviata, in terms of amount of knowledge it delivered, however, it lost to Oviata, as she was judged the winner by a crowd of journalists in delivering the argument. A little smoother on delivering the argument, but not in the knowledge, which doesn't really make much sense to me. Because if you know more about the topic and you can rationally explain your points, you should be the winner. But they were humans that were judging the computer, so what can you say? <laughs> and the second debate with Zafrir, the audience found the AI to be more persuasive than him, which saw the project debater uh, winning over nine members of the audience in about 40 minutes of its argument in favor of telemedicine and beating Zafrir. Anyway, you, if you want to debate somebody on where are the spaceships, why, why do we not have spaceships, maybe you want to take it up with this computer. Project Debater there. <laughs> Master Debater. Master, Master Debater. Debater. 2000. Uh, yeah. 2000. Master Debater 3000. <laughs> so. Mental Master Debater 3000. That's what they should call it. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so you want the smartest person on the planet? It's not a human. It's a computer. <laughs> <laughs> Damn if I do, damn if I fucking don't. And that made me think of the Alan Parsons Project song, Damn If I Do, or whatever. I wouldn't want to be like you. Remember, the, Yeah, remember that song? Yeah, sure, absolutely. That's a good tune. Alan Parsons is great. Yep, yep. Oh, by the way, the other day, Moose Girl, um, is this the no. one? Is this the one? Oh, this is not the one. Okay, I, uh, before we get to the Moose Girl thing that she, that she okay. sent me, um, Why did I download? Oh, this, this. this. Uh, I, I downloaded off of the YouTube the other day uh, a concert by uh, Samantha Fish that, oh, was nice. that was posted up by Blues Broad. And cool. at the beginning of each track on hers, there was like four to seven seconds of, of silence. And I didn't want that in there. And I've got a lot of tools that could cut that out, but I wanted something, right, that, right, was, right. something that was really simple to use to do that, and I, and I came across, and that was not going to give me other weird problems, um, right. which a lot of the, you know, the, the free softwares do. Anyway, I came across this thing. It's called MP3 Direct Cut. It's available for um, your Windows, your Apple, and your uh, Linux systems, um, and it's super, super simple. Um, so check it out there, uh, MP3 Direct Cut. If if you need some MP3 tools, nice. that's that's that, that, that's a good way to go. Um, cool. Let me see if I still have your link that you gave me. Oh, I think I probably have it down here in a, in a, in a PM, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe, probably. Maybe, maybe. Um, let's see here. Scroll, 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 scroll. <laughs> I um, hate that. <laughs> 
That's a picture. Yeah. That's not it. Okay, where is it? Vivid teach. That's not it. Yelp. That's not it. Uh, oh, that's from last Friday. Uh, seat charting. <laughs> oh shit! You got a lot of links there, Graham. Is this it? Oh, our Tommy the Beard. No, is that the one? Yep. Was that the one? I think so. Is he is he the one that posted up the uh Double so Mage three? Oh, there's Charlie Parr, yep. Del McCurry, yep. Last Rebel, Blue Ox. I can relink it. Sam Bush. Oh here it is. Oh yeah, he's got a whole bunch of other concerts up there too. Oh yeah, so, big so, time. So like, those you... those might be worth grabbing. Um anyway, so she posted up the uh a link to the, the Blue Ox concert, uh yep. the, the band The Devil Makes Three and um and and uh, you go on go on to this site on archive.org, and um, there's a link down below here, uh, and it, it just says um, download options. And where's the one that I got? Yeah, archive.org. You can find not just my friend, but any other oh, people that record. I mean, you can find amazing things. I've I've plugged this site before for so many okay. before. Yeah, no one really it, took an interest. Yeah, and you can get any format you want, but if if you want it right. in in the one that I got, which is VBR MP3, you just click on the VBR MP3 link, and then you can download the zip file with all of the tracks in it. Uh, separate, yeah, separated. Separated. festival. He to, was there for like the main stage. Yeah, before, and he's like, got he's got a bunch of the other concerts empty. too, so I'll probably grab some of those tomorrow or something. But um, right. So and, and they're all tagged up nicely. Um, and, and yeah, they, he does a good job. He's and and they got friend. like the even in it, friend of mine. collected image file of them. So um, check them out there, and you can you can get yourself some nice free music there. He's a personal on, friend of mine. He's so, a personal friend of Moose like, Girls, so you yeah. know he's a good guy. She, Very she, good guy. She, he records so many shows, you guys. I mean, he is at like so many shows, like. <laughs> It's insane. Like, he was at the main stage for all Blue Ox. There was a side stage at Blue Ox, which he did not record. He's like, he wanted to have two mic stands up, but he thought that someone else was going to do the side stage, so he did not do the side stage, set up mics for the side stage. But, like, I was, he was, he always stands right there, like, to the side, by his mic stand, really. And he has his mics up in the air, like, he's got a tower that he raises up, puts his mics up in the air. Right. Um, and so... I just, I always see him standing up there. Like, if I make it up to the front of the stage, Tommy's, like, right there. You know what I mean? Right. Standing up by his mic stand or whatever. But um, he record. I mean, it's so awesome because if there's shows that I can't go to, like, he'll, re I know he's there recording. You know, if he goes, like, First Avenue in February to see Perkner Stansel on a Thursday, which I can't go to that, I know that he's going to be there recording me. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's really cool. So I can always hear it again. But besides my friend's site on archive.org, I just want to tell you guys, you need to check this site out. Old school stuff is on there. So, I mean, you would yeah. be amazed. Yeah, Chloe, Chloe actually does post for. a lot of links from there. What? So Chloe does actually post a lot of links yeah, from there. Yeah, no, that's good. Archive.org is awesome, guys. Yeah, and for live music, for just, oh my, there's so many tapers out there. You can just get downloads of live shows. It's just, it's awesome. And, and if you want to awesome. know, this this uh, this is the uh, program I use for tagging. It's uh, there you go. an MP3 tag, and it, it works great. You can do all kinds of various things with it. Oh, well, awesome. Convert the tags into file names That's or nice. convert the file names cool. into tags. You can multiple tag everything with like a, a genre or artist name or, awesome. or whatever. Uh, it's free. Uh, well, he wants money, you know, but it's free. You, you can use it free for for forever, or just throw the guy a, couple, a bone, you know, a couple bucks or whatever, um, if if you like it and use it a lot. Um, so uh, so that, so that's great stuff there. Yeah, I mean, basically, you could if you weren't at Blue Ox last weekend, you can go on to my friend's site and get like most of the main stage apps live. I mean, it's video, it's audio only, not video, but still, I mean. Charlie Parr was amazing. I mean, the infamous string dusters were amazing. It's just, I, I don't know how to, like, trust it, you know. But like Lowell even said, she's been on there. She's listened to Grateful Dead since it's I mean, 
Yeah. There's so many shows on that site. You would be amazed, people. It, I've plugged this site for years, and I it's still going strong, and it's just an awesome reference. It's, it's for for music. Sure. And for books and other things. It's not just music. It's other things, too. It's yeah. history. It's it, it, There's so much on this thing that you, you should check it out. That's just, I, I said this years ago too, but anyway, it's just a very good, excuse me, reference. Yeah. So it says they have 279 billion web pages. <laughs> Hot wood does make things better. I Do mean, <laughs> you can sit there and call it like, talk like it's a negative thing and be on the hands bandwagon about weed, but pot is beneficial. Absolutely. So anybody that's sitting there dissing weed, that tells me they don't know, they're not educated on the subject as much as they should be. Because to make fun of it, it's just lame. I can see making fun of meth, or crack, or whatever, but pot, really? Yeah, yeah. Pot is beneficial for people. It is helping people. Uh, pot, they pot. Have diseases. It cures people. It cures cancer. Right. Uh, CBD oil cures cancer. So to this weed... It's just, to me, it's just, you're uneducated. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. A anyway, uh, Poxified, Audacity is awesome. I'm actually recording this right now on Audacity. But if, if you yeah, just want Audacity. to, yep. uh, if you just want to cut out little bits, that other program, what was it, what was it called that I, that I linked in there earlier? MP3. Um, uh, uh, MB3 Direct Cut. Um, yep. It's really fast, and with Audacity, you, you got to export the audio, and and it takes a while to load it up and, and uncompress it and stuff. And this is this other program is it, just like zippity doo dah. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, but and and that's what I was looking for. Well, it was something I, I was actually right. looking for a multiple cut thing with a with a silence detection, and I came oh. across a bunch of them, but none of them really did what I wanted. And uh, this direct cut does so. Um, nice. I, 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 you know, I, 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 re I, I install and research a bunch of programs when I'm looking yeah, for something. Yeah, he new. always you do that. <laughs> That's what you do. I mean, you know. Uh, yeah. Anyway, cool. about uh, this Internet Archive says it has 279 billion web pages, 11, See? 11 million books and texts. Four million yeah, audio I mean, recordings. Any book you want is on that archive.org. I mean, I'm serious, you people. I've told, I talked about this before, like years ago, this site. And I'm like, gotta check this out. This archive.org, it's got everything on there. I mean, it's amazing. Tons it's, of stuff. It's have, yeah, it's amazing. It, yeah. It, 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 it's amazing. I can't, it's like a library of music and books, and it's just insane. Like old school stuff. Too, you know, recordings. It, you guys would love it. I mean, if if you're into that kind of thing, you would absolutely adore the site. Yeah, I've I've been using Audacity ever since we've done this show uh, to to record the yep. programs. <laughs> so. yep, every time he's always used Audacity for ten years. Yeah. No. Nope. But uh, yeah, so I, I'm on it right now. Anyway, so um. Let's get back to a little... little yes, it is like a museum, Pop. I'm sorry, Greg. Yeah, it's it, like a museum. Yep, it seriously is. It's, yeah, no, it's, it's so great. Okay, what now? I just said, yeah, it's great. I, I, it's a good it site. It, it's awesome. It's a really good site. Anyway, since, uh, you know, not since that, because I already had this queued up. Um, <laughs> but but it fits. It fits in. Uh, since, since we were uh, ha having the discussion of uh, everybody, you know, not everybody, but people getting into little tiffs over nothingness here, right. this song seems to fit. All right. Let's hear it. Enjoy, everyone. Oh, yeah, a little Aerosmith there for you, doing Baby, Please Don't Go. Before that, we had Janis Joplin, a Moose Girl Request, with Cry Baby. And we kicked it off with The Youngbloods, a new one from uh, Monroe's Retro, uh new video from Monroe's Retro, The Youngbloods from back in 1967. 
doing Get Together. I hope you all listen to that song, Get Together, and uh, the lyrics therein, and take that to heart here. You know, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with doing that. There ain't nothing wrong with getting together. Yep. And uh, just, just uh, you know, love everybody right now. Quit, quit, quit the bickin, quit the bickin. <laughs> well, it's like if you waste too much time, I get around, you know, that's what gets accomplished. Well, whether you want to accomplish anything or not, it doesn't matter. The thing is, what are you arguing about? What, what's the point? Where's the value? <laughs> right. Oh man, I tell you. <laughs> Just, just, I tell you. Just try and try and. I'm just so stoked that I get to go see Great the Dead and Co- Company tomorrow. And it's Bobby Weir, it's Mickey Hart, it's Bill, um, the keyboardist, and it's Old Teal Burbridge on fucking bass, and it's John Mayer on guitar. Yeah. With Bobby on guitar too, and Bobby's looking more and more like Jerry, like. Jerry asked, I should say. Like, they're not the same person, obviously. But, um, I've seen Bobby actually with a full beard before. He he shaved that off, though. I'm sure that's for summertime. But, um, he's sounding good. And when they got Burbage playing with them on bass, man, it's going to be awesome. Cool. And they got John Mayer on guitar. John Mayer, I don't care what, you know, people criticize him all the time, but he can't play well, he's a, fucking he, guitar. He, he's, 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 a big he's fucking good. He's a big douchebag, but he certainly can play guitar. He can fucking play the guitar. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, personally, uh, he's yeah. personally might not. He might be an asshole personally, but he can play the motherfucking guitar. <laughs> oh yeah. I mean, he he's very good at it. But um, it's going to be fun because I haven't been to Alpine Valley for a while, like. I've never seen the dead there. When I saw the dead with Jerry, it was at Soldier Field in Chicago. But I've been to Alpine for further festival, which was like came happened like a couple of years after Jerry died, or maybe a year after he died, like '94 or something like that. Right. And I saw a couple further festivals there at Alpine, and then I saw fish there like five times. Wow. At Alpine, yep, yeah, I've seen fish there five times. Like, I mean. Every show that you go to there is really good. Like, you, like, even at Alpine, like, I wasn't worried about getting a seat ticket because those are, like, $200. Like, at Alpine, you don't need a seat ticket. You could just be a lawn ticket for 45 and you're good. You know what I mean? It sounds awesome because it's a natural, it's like an amphitheater. And it just, the sound just blares out, dude. It just blares out. Like, I, I saw those, those Lobos boys, like, like third role at Alpine, like in the reserve seats in front of the stage, right? Mm-hmm. But then I've also seen fish in those reserve seats, but I've also seen them on the lawn. It sounds just as good, if not better, on the lawn. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just because there's like kind of an over covering for the fucking reserve seats. There's like a covering so that blocks the sound. Right. That sound just like goes right out there. It's just awesome. It's an awesome venue. I mean, everyone loves Alpine Valley. They do. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's just, it's going to be so cool just to be in that vibe. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't even care. I didn't want to spend $200 for a reserve seat. They were, those were sold out. I just want a lawn ticket. So that's where it's at, dude. Yeah. I mean, that's where the, it's really fun, you know? Sure, sure. So it's like, yeah, and like I said, I haven't been there. Shit, last time I was there, I saw fish. That was probably, that was before the boys were born. That was probably, shit, 20 years ago. Over 20, probably 20 years ago. Right. Since I've been there, yep. Wow. So it's going to be cool. It sounds like it's going to be great. Yeah, I mean, Bobby, I saw the first song tonight, because Nugs TV had it on Facebook for free, like the very first song that they played tonight. Which was Hell in a Bucket. <laughs> yeah. Which, that's one of my favorite fucking songs. Yeah, it's a great tune. I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Love e- that song. E- excellent tune. It is. And so <laughs> I'm like, fuck yeah. They sounded great. They looked great. It's going to be awesome tomorrow. It's going to be a good day. 
But speaking of going to hell in a bucket, let me close out with this uh, this story here. Okay. <laughs> Obama at Bilderberg. The U.S. must surrender to the New World Order. <laughs> okay. Like, well, we didn't know that already, or they didn't know that already. For, former president says progress can only come when individuals surrender <laughs> their rights. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. What so, right? Oh, okay, oh, right so, should be in quotation marks. Anyway, Obama was filmed at the secretive Bilderberg conference saying ordinary Americans must surrender to the New World Order because they are too small-minded to govern their own affairs. Uh -huh. You're a bunch of freaking idiots. That's what he's saying. Yep, that's what he's meaning. The top secret speech at the Bilderberg conference saw Obama described the New World Order as the international order we have worked generations to build. Yes, no nothing crap. new. Nothing new. The former president exactly. then concluded that progress can only come when individuals surrender their rights to an all-powerful sovereign, the New World Order. Uh, <laughs> all right, I don't need to go on with this. I'll give you a link to it. You can read it for yourself. It's over on neonnettle.com. Um, <laughs> there could be only one. And you ain't it. <laughs> Anyway, I gotta I gotta do a last set here. You're, you're gonna like this. Yep. You're gonna like it's this. Time. You're, you're, you're gonna like this set, Moose. All right. I Sounds guarantee good. you. Awesome. Amazing. All right. So there's a little thing called Hallelujah. Yeah, she could shake that thing. That was uh, Betty Page dancing to Black Betty Ram Jams. Black Betty right there. Uh, before that, a sock puppet request. Buddy Guy and Stevie Ray Vaughan with Champagne and Reefer uh, from Buddy's Buddy Guy's Legends. Yes, indeed. And then we had a couple of Devil Makes 3 tracks. Old number 7 and Hallelujah. They close it on out here for you. Yes, indeed. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> that's a cool thing, too. Uh, anyway, that's going to wrap it up for us here tonight on uh, for the Freakers Ball, the first yeah. Freakers Ball of summer 2018. Hope you all have a nice summer. Hope you're all back next Saturday, on uh, Friday. <laughs> Saturday. Uh, but speaking of Saturday, tomorrow... You'll have the dark table with uh, Flash and Vinny. That's right, Flash and Vinny now, um, at least for the summer. And then uh, on Sunday at noon Eastern, I'll be on with the blues here and uh, playing some trivia in the chat. And uh, Moose Girl won't be here because she'll be no, either I'm on. Not. What's that? I will not be here. Nope, she'll be either up at the place or coming back from there. I'll be coming back at that point in time. Show tomorrow, yep. And then I'll after after the blues on on Sunday, we'll be Hal Ansley behind the woodshed at 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, and Gary L and Gigi's Boo at 7 p.m. Eastern on the road less traveled. Grammy will be back Wednesday, weather permitting. <laughs> and. Um, just in case you guys want to hear a live audio version, or you can actually buy a live video version of the show tomorrow night um, on nugs.net, or you can do mixlr.com, Mixler, and there will be live audio streams of the show tomorrow night. Nice. And also, widespread, if that's not your style, the Dead and Company, Widespread Panic is also playing live at Red Rock. So you can also catch that on mixlr.com. And I'm only promoting this site because I love this site. Because average people that are at shows can stream the, the, the audio portion of the show. And it's even though you can't see it, you can hear it. And it's really great. Because it's almost like being there. So um, if you are interested in that type of thing, let me know. And I can hook you up with a lot of links for that. Yeah. 
So there you go. All right, we'll be back. Next, you gonna be back next Friday? Uh, I believe so. All right, I'm, we'll, I'm pretty sure. Okay, <laughs> we'll we'll be back next Friday with another Freakers Ball for you. Yep. See you then. Peace. Peace.